254 days ago, Kwasi Kwarteng walked out of Downing Street, having just been appointed Chancellor. With his political soulmate Liz Truss at the helm after a gruelling leadership contest, the pair pledged to rebuild the UK economy with a menu of tax cuts and deregulation. Plans he announced to the Commons in his now infamous mini-budget. Mr Speaker, we are at the beginning of a new era. But that new era was to last a political nanosecond. His strategy, paying for tax cuts with a massive increase in borrowing, unleashed chaos in the financial markets, causing the pound and government bonds to tank and mortgage rates to spike. The Bank of England was forced to spend £19 billion buying up government debt in order to stave off full-scale catastrophe. And although that money has been recouped, many households are still counting the cost in higher mortgage payments. Are you about to reverse more of your tax cuts, Chancellor? A major U-turn on his flagship income tax policy wasn't enough to save Mr Kwarteng's skin. We're coming up with a on 31st October and I'm not going to preempt that. While he was in Washington for talks with the IMF, talks on his future were being held in Downing Street. His fate was sealed before he'd even touched back down on British soil, 38 days after his appointment. I was incredibly sorry to lose him. He is a great friend. Ms Truss lasted little longer, leaving her successor Rishi Sunak to deal with the continued economic fallout as the Conservative Party tussles over its future direction. This week, the Prime Minister busied himself on the international stage, while at home, the right of the party appeared to be auditioning for his replacement. Ms Truss, meanwhile, is determined to prove she can add up to more than the answer to a pub quiz question. She's currently in Taiwan, calling for Mr Sunak to be more robust with China. Do you feel like you've been betrayed by the Prime Minister? Her longtime friend has been rather more tight-lipped since leaving number 11. But how does he reflect on the state of his party and his role in its current plight? Well, earlier when I sat down with Kwasi Kwarteng, I began by asking him about the impact of Brexit on the UK economy and the fact that, according to the Office for Budget Responsibility, GDP would still be 4% lower in the long run than it would have been had we stayed in the EU. You, you say that, but, but this, is, we, this is just a function of the fact that we're, we have such an island mentality. You look at what's going on in France. You look at what the reforms that Macron's trying to do. That is not a, an economy that's booming. OK, you look at what's happening in Germany, where energy costs have really um, you know, put a lot of pressure on their industry. They're not booming. They're flatlining. To say that, oh, well, because we're not growing at 2%, that means that we should be in the EU, is complete misunderstanding of what's actually going on in the world. Rishi Sunak's now been Prime Minister for more than six months. He got absolutely mauled, the party got mauled in the local elections. Who should take responsibility for that, do you think? Should it be him? Should it be Liz Truss? Boris Johnson? I think our job is to be loyal to the leader. And frankly, you know, we're in a difficult place and we're going to make it worse if we are in lots of different factions and not 100% behind Rishi Sunak. Is there now a party within a party? Has Rishi Sunak lost control of his party? No, I don't think he has. But I think it's really important as we get closer to the election that we're more united and supportive uh, of the Prime Minister. Suella Braden, the Home Secretary, was a, a star of that mm. recent uh, Conservative National Conservatism Conference. Your parents came here mm. from Ghana. So yeah, I wonder in the 60s. what you Yeah, I wonder what you make of a Home Secretary talking about dreaming of sending refugees to Rwanda and saying that white people should feel no collective guilt over slavery. Are you comfortable with her language? Look, I think it's a very contentious issue. And I think but I think you should be able to talk about immigration without being labelled a racist. And that's broadly her position. That's what she keeps saying. And I think that's right. I think you can, you can be sensitive about language. You can be very appreciative of you know, people's diverse backgrounds. So should she be more sensitive, do you think? Well, I, I personally haven't taken offence of what she said. It, it's, all very, uh, you know, it's all very difficult to say who, who uh, takes offence. People take offence at all sorts of things. I suppose what we've seen in the last few days is a kind of cry of pain from the Conservative right over all sorts of policies, mm. immigration we've talked about, but also the tax burden, the highest in peacetime. One in five taxpayers now dragged into the higher rate of tax. Can Rishi Sunak win a general election without being more radical, for example, on tax? I don't see how we can go into the election, and it is 18 months away, saying that we're going to put up taxes. I don't see that as, a, as an option. I think the tax burden is very high, 
But as we saw uh, only last autumn, I think it has to be done in a careful way. I don't think you can just simply, you know, rip the doors off and, and say, right, this is what we're doing. And that um, is what you did. You ripped yeah, the I doors mean, I, off. Well, I wouldn't say we ripped the doors off, but it was, it was to a very, very high intense uh, time period. It sounds like a mayor culpa. It sounds like you've had... I've, I've said that. I've said that. I'm not going to apologise, OK? If you're trying to get me to apologise publicly, I, I've, I've said very clearly, you know, what was done was done, but I don't believe in politicians who endlessly, you know, uh, apologising for everything that, that, that's gone in the past. I'm looking forward, and I think we could have done things differently, absolutely. But um, a lot of people are looking forward to much higher mortgage rates, cripplingly high mortgage rates. Hundreds of thousands of people can't pay their mortgage mm. bills because of what you and Liz No, that's did. not true. I mean, really? the, the, there was a, the, the interest rates have gone up anyway. Kit, there was a the trust time. premium, a there trust a, quarter yeah, premium. You, you can, but now, today, if I have to fix a mortgage today, it's higher, not because of what happened in October, but because interest rates were going up. The Bank of England governor, not many weeks ago, said that there was still a, quote, hangover effect from your mini budget. But there's lots of hangover effects. I mean, you know, I would say, p people say that the, the Bank of England governor was too slow in putting up interest rates. But that's, that's another uh, thing that's thrown into the mix. I accept responsibility for a turbulent time. I think that we try to do too much, uh, too quickly. And, uh, you know, Liz Truss and myself, uh, paid, paid, paid the price for that. Well, we, and so did lots of householders. And I think I a lot that. of people might just want a little bit more remorse from you, a little, you know, I've, an I've apology. I've said repeatedly, no, no, I'm not going to, I've said, I don't, I don't think politicians should apologise for everything, and, and I've said that repeatedly. Do and I'm think... accepting responsibility for the fact that I think we, did, we moved too fast, mm -hmm. um, and, it was, and it was too much, too, too quickly. Do you feel the force And I've of said that before. Do you feel the force of people's anger when you're out and about? No, you see, this is shopping. the world... I know the media wants... We want to create a world of people are being angry and, you know, outrage and... But actually, what I've found is that some people will, will come up to people and say, and say, you know, I'm very angry, I'm very upset. You get that. I'm very struck, actually, by the fact that people are... We, you tried your best. It was a very traumatic period, the mm. whole mini-budget period. Mm. Traumatic for the country, traumatic for mortgage um, holders for householders, as we've discussed. Traumatic for you as well? Do you feel well, it was you're still difficult. recovering? It was difficult. Um, and, you know, I was, had the uh, glorious experience of being sacked on Twitter, <laughs> uh, which was uh, a pretty extraordinary thing to live through. And Were I you always serious feel, with Liz Truss for doing no, that? No, I mean, you know, the Prime Minister was doing her thing. I mean, my own view is that, um, you know, I tend to be, try and be quite cool in, in, when things are uh, in, a, in a panic situation and a difficult situation. I think the Prime Minister has got a fantastic temperament, our current Prime Minister. I haven't always agreed with him politically, but he's a very, very cool customer. He's someone who's very calm. Uh, and, and I think that's very reassuring. Him. Well, I don't think she reacted in a, in a particularly calm way, um, if I can say that. She was your closest she's friend. She's a good friend. She's not my closest friend. I mean, we've got lots of close friends in politics. But she is a good friend. She, she remains still a friend. is. She remains a friend, yeah, absolutely. When did you last talk to her? I spoke to her maybe a couple of weeks ago. Maybe three weeks ago. I can't remember, but, but not, not that long. So Certainly since... Um, we left office. So have you forgiven her? For, look, I'm not in the business, as I say, of f f forgiveness. I just want to look forward. So you haven't um, forgiven her? I mean, <laughs> you know... You, you ask these um, questions, these sort of binary questions. Um, and, well, you, and you I'm said not giving, you weren't angry with her. You I'm not angry. I, don't, I try not to be angry. I try not to be bitter. I think we've just got to move forward. So she's in Taiwan pushing mm. Rishi Sunak to do more on China. The Chinese embassy says it's a dangerous political stunt. Is she right to talk about it or should she keep her She should talk herself? about it. She should talk about it. I'm not sure that going to Taiwan and, and making the statement she did was necessarily the best way of, of, of approaching that, but she's got very strong views. Whatever happens in the future, you, do you think you deserve a second chance in the cabinet? Look, Does Liz Truss? No one has a right to cabinet. We were all very lucky that we were in, uh, spent as long as we did in Cabinet. I think Liz was there for eight years. I was spent three, nearly three years in Cabinet. It was very fortunate to do that. You also got caught in a lobbying scandal, um, well, we, it, agreeing it, to work for £10,000 a day. It, it blew over. We, they, they, they referred it to the, um, the Standards Commission. The Standards Commission said, we'd done nothing wrong. It was a, a classic sting. You know, it's not... It's not you embarrassed edifying. to be caught, though. It's not. I mean, I wasn't happy. It wasn't the happiest day of my life when it was in the papers. But I thought, well, we've done nothing wrong. We've followed the rules absolutely. And these things happen. And we were, it was probably a bit naive, actually, on our part uh, to, to, be, to be interviewed in that way. Just finally, do you think the British public has forgiven you, will forgive you, will ever forgive you? Look, I don't see in terms of forgiveness. And I mean, you're setting this thing up as if, you know, we're criminals or something and that, you know, there's been a huge... 
um, you know, uh, crime are committed. Well, you cost but, the country and you cost people, the British taxpayer, tens of billions no, of pounds. No, look, so, so, so all of that um, is something that happens. Um, there were lots of issues relating to interest rates, relating to the exchange rate, relating to what the Fed were doing. Uh, politicians do make, um, uh, can make mistakes, do make mistakes. I've said repeatedly, and now you're bringing up, you know, forgiveness and, and redemption and all of this business. I'm not interested in that. I'm just interested in, in looking forward and trying to take part in as measured a way as I can in, in, in the debate. Quasi Quarting, thanks very much. Thank you.